one. So this is my first time, just gonna let you guys know. And hopefully I won't stumble around too much. But I see a lot of familiar faces and my parents, when I leave, they're back here. So thank you. <laughs> that makes me feel better to see my mom and dad. Um, so, and I wanted to thank Alyssa for putting this together and it's been great getting to know you. And I've known a couple of the ladies, but getting to meet the other ladies as well. This has just been a really cool experience. So tonight I want to talk to you guys just a few minutes about attraction marketing and how you can utilize attraction marketing with social media. This is something that's very close to my heart and it's the way I have personally built my business. Um, I am not a salesperson. I refuse to sell and as a matter of fact, if you try to sell me something, I'm going to tell you no because you tried to sell it to me. I don't like to be sold to, therefore I don't like to sell. However, I love to share and if I'm passionate about something, then I can share about it all day long and I know a lot of you guys can relate to that. So what is attraction marketing? And I know we've all heard this term so many times and it's, it's really a lot of different things, but sort of in a nutshell, attraction marketing is how to basically build a relationship and trust with your prospects and bring your prospects to you rather than you having to go hunt down your prospects. So you know, with direct sales, I think one of the reasons it's kind of gotten a bad rap sometimes, you know, we've all heard it, is like we're the hunters and they're the prey. You know, we have to do cold calls sometimes and things like that, but with attraction marketing, it lays all that to rest and it pretty much flip-flops the situation and your prospects are gonna to come to you and it's really cool how it works. So let me give you a good example. So just imagine this, we've got this beautiful storefront, it's in this really nice location, a lot of foot traffic, and the outside of the store is gorgeous, great landscaping and the window, uh, window treatments and everything, the window displays are really nice and the sign is beautiful and just everything about the store just makes you want to go in right and it's just you got to go check it out you got to see what's inside so you're going to go in because it's attractive on the outside and you want to see what's inside so you go in and what do you see same thing it's exactly the same on the inside as the outside it's just as beautiful and the sales lady comes up and she greets you very warmly and she gives you coffee to sip on while you shop and she wants to know what she can do to help you and you let her know you're there to get a gift for somebody. And so she starts asking you questions and she's actually listening to you. And you're telling her what you need and when you leave there, you have this cute little bag and the perfect gift that you were needing. And it's all because she took the time to listen and she helped you. And you sit in your car and you're thinking, you know, I could have gotten that same thing at another store, probably anywhere, but the way she made me feel, I couldn't have gotten that from any other store. So I'm gonna go here from now on. I'm never gonna go shop at another store for these items, except here, because she was so amazing. So take that situation, let's set it over here for a minute. Now let's think about the desperate store, okay? So we've got the same kind of looking store, not looking, but it's in the same location, we'll say. But this store is not very attractive from the outside. It's not well kept. Landscaping is very shabby. The sign's hanging from one nail. And you've even heard advertisements about the store on the radio and they really sound gimmicky and salesy and kind of just make you feel dirty just to even hear the the advertisements on the radio. And to make matters worse, because they don't have a clue how to advertise properly, they've got a guy over here with a sign strapped to him and he's like chasing, yeah, I know, like the sandwich fork guy, yeah. <laughs> but he's not the nice one that doesn't bother you. This is the one that tracks you down and runs you down and he's like trying to get a flyer in your hand and he's begging you to come inside and telling you everything is so cheap, it's like half off, come in, come in, come in. And you're just like, uh, you're begging me to come in, you don't wanna go in, right? So your, your immediate reaction is, I don't want anything to do with you, get away from me, and I wanna put the flyer in the trash, okay? Sometimes we are like that. We beat up our warm market. We wanna stay in our comfort little, comfortable little <coughs> circle with our friends and family, and we want to squeeze every ounce out of them and make them be our only customers. <laughs> and if they don't sign up with our, on our team, then we feel like we have nowhere else to go with it, right? We, we're too afraid to get out of our comfort zone. Well, with attraction marketing, the great thing about it is it also allows you to network and get outside of your comfort zone and attract people from all over in and not just your tiny little comfortable circle, okay? So I'm gonna talk about four simple tips that you can apply to use attraction marketing in your favor. So the first one is consistency. And we've always heard consistency is key and this is so true. This isn't anything new that we've heard, but for me personally, when I joined my company, it was new and a lot of people, especially in this area, had never heard about it. So I had a lot of customers just kind of right off the bat and a lot of the ladies joined my team because it was like the thing to do. You know, it was like the cool thing. It's this cool new company. 
But you know, with any new company, that's going to fizzle away. And I still remember to this day, it's like for months and months, I had to order at least one order every single day. And then I remember that one day I didn't get an order. And I was like, oh no. Like, nobody likes me. I'm going to have to actually work. You know, what do I do? And it's not that I didn't work, but I'm like, I didn't know what to do. So I thought from that moment, okay, I've got to come up with a game plan. I don't sell. <laughs> up to that point, I hadn't had to sell. It just did it all by itself. So I knew I had to do something. So that's when I started applying the techniques of attraction marketing. So just being consistent. So here's a little story I like to tell. I have this girl on my team, her name is Lori. And Lori, I did not know, I grew up with her. Um, remember Lori? I grew up with her and I hadn't seen her in years, but Lori was watching me on Facebook. And I'll talk a lot about Facebook because that's my particular platform, Facebook and YouTube. Um, but she'd been watching me, but she never liked or commented on anything I ever posted, ever. And then one day, a year and a half later, she joins my team, kind of like what Tamara was talking about earlier. And I had no idea she was watching me. But here's the thing, during that year and a half, was my business always just up here and just super successful and super busy? No, it's not with any kind of direct sales. It's just not, it's impossible. But did Lori know that? No, she never knew. Because everything that I was sharing, it still, was giving value. Everything I shared on Facebook, every time I spoke to a person, I was just as excited, even during those slow, hard times, because I believe so strongly in my company and my product, she never knew. And had she known, she probably would not have joined because I would have been getting desperate. And we see those desperate people, she wouldn't have touched me. She'd be like, I'm going with her. I wanna go with somebody else that's got confidence and that is not desperate, right? So through consistency with my business, always sharing and being excited and positive and never, ever, ever letting up on that, I gained a team member. And I've gained my team members as a whole that way. I think I've sponsored 86 or 87 people to date. And it was through consistency with my business, okay? Consistency is attractive. People want to be part of something consistent. It's comfortable. And they know that you're not gonna leave them, right? So that takes me to my next point, which is dedication. So, um, you guys have seen, and I think <coughs> Renee was probably talking about this a little bit a uh, minute ago, but you have seen the person that does join direct sales and they're super excited and they're on fire. And let's just use Facebook again, for example, and they're posting and they're posting and they're posting and you know that they're selling it because everybody knows they're selling it because they're telling everybody. <laughs> and then like, you just kind of sit back and watch. We all do it. We watch each other. We're like, how long is this going to last, right? <laughs> so a few months go by, a few months go by, and then all of a sudden, like, a post here, a post there, and then nothing. And then all of a sudden, they're posting about something else. Mm -hmm. <gasps> I love this now. This used to be cool, but this is the thing now. Mm -hmm. And so all of a sudden, you're like, wait, and you're totally confused. And you're like, uh, I thought this was the thing that you said was the best thing ever, and it's life changing, and you told me to get that, so I did, because you told me to. But now you're saying this is, so now I'm not even sure if I can believe you. Mm -hmm. So as a, from a customer standpoint, that's confusing to your customers, right? They don't know if they can trust or believe what you're saying now because you've just done a 180. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, the other message that kind of sends is that they could be in that business just for the money. Okay, nobody, I mean, money's important, don't get me wrong. We're all in direct sales for the money, but that's, that's not the only reason, okay? If you've got passion and if you have drive behind what you're sharing, you're not in it just for the money. So just pure dedication. When people see that you're dedicated and they see you month after month after month, year after year, and you're still with that one company, you are consistent and you are dedicated. And those things are attractive. It's going to gain you customers and it's going to gain, gain you team leaders because they know that you're going to be a strong leader and you're going to teach them to do the, th the same thing. You're not going to leave them for this next shiny thing over here, right? Excuse me, I gotta get water. I'm on allergy medicine. <laughs> you know how that makes your mouth dry? Yeah. Sorry. Okay, so that takes me to my next point, which is the art of non-selling. So like I said, I am not a salesperson, right? There is a whole art to not selling, and I strongly recommend you look you can watch videos and read your books and watch DVDs and things about it. It's, it's super, super great for your business. But just imagine, you've got a picture, you're scrolling down through Facebook once again on your timeline and or your news feed and you see this picture of these products and it's got like the product and it's got a caption and it says, 
get yours here and here's the website and like an arrow pointing what do you do you keep scrolling like do you stop and look at that no does that make you want to take your purse out and immediately buy that because they told you to because they had this picture of this product that you've seen 500 million times no so same situation however what if you took that product and you applied it to yourself you used it on yourself or you're showing it in your picture with yourself you're showing you're giving value okay but not just a picture of yourself you're going to say something about this you're going to say why this is the best thing you have ever tried this is life-changing and and for women in here if it does something if it helps a problem that all us women have tell people about it we all know how you know the struggles that we go through so if it's anything that we know can help other people we want to tell you about it so in your post or when you share when you're speaking to people make sure you tell them and you're telling them and giving it value and you're not just saying here buy this this is pretty buy it because I told you to mm -hmm. that's not the way that works so make sure that everything you share and post and speak about make sure what you're representing you've got passion behind it I am so passionate not just about my products but about the company itself because I know how it can change lives you guys are all a part of a company that can change lives that is passion that itself you know even if it's not a tangible product the company is and it's an opportunity that you can be passionate about so just simply by sharing and not selling by being passionate and excited and not just doing I'm just gonna say lazy posting I hate to see a graphic don't do it don't do it do something with value that is attractive people want to see that they may actually click on that picture and especially if it's like a weight loss product you know you all do it and you zoom in, you're like, do they really lose that weight? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Looking like it, you know, you, we all do it. So is she really, is it really what she said? But then you might, let's just say this isn't somebody you know, but it kind of floated across your timeline. And so you might get curious and you click on their name and you want to go check their page out. So this leads me to my last point, which is marketing yourself. So let's say they go and check out your page on Facebook. However, <coughs> They get over because that really cool post drew them to your page, but they get there and um, it's funny because now the profile name says Mo Money and the profile <laughs> picture is like of a cat and the cover photo is like of an old barn and you're scrolling and you're trying to see like what other posts they've got that could be of value like that one you saw, but it's like recipes and Candy Crush and all of these things that are not business related. Okay. So this is your business page, y'all. Any Facebook or social media, your website, whatever you are directing people to should not look like that. It should have a picture of you as your profile, your beautiful smiley face, sorry guys, I guess you're beautiful, um, smile, but it should represent you, okay? It shouldn't be your cat, it shouldn't even really be your children. This should be a photo of you. This is your business page. This is where you're directing people to. The other thing it should have is positivity. No negative, okay? I work full time, as Alyssa mentioned earlier. I work for an insurance company. I work for the home office now, so I travel and train, but before that I was a CSR. And if I had something bad happen to me, I did not come into the office and every customer that came in, I'm like, hi, how are you? And they're like, great, how are you? I'm like, wow. And I started telling them about this guy that cut me off at Walmart. I don't do that. We don't tell our customers about the terrible thing that happened to us earlier. So why would you do it on your Facebook page? Like why would we post this negative stuff? That's your business page and you're putting negative on your business page. So we don't want to do that. We want to keep it positive, uplifting, and we want to motivate and empower people when they look at our stuff. And that way they're going to be interested at that point because otherwise they're going to turn and run just like the guy with the, the flyers and the sandwich board, right? Okay. The other thing I like to tell my girls is kind of pretend like you've got an invisible Miss America sash on. And when you're out in public, just take social media out of the equation for a minute. When we're out in public, you want to present yourself as such. People are watching you. And if you've got a sign on your vehicle, don't be having road rage. <laughs> People are like, oh, that's that girl that sells that stuff, and I saw her yell at that person. They watch you. So make sure that you are representing yourself always in a positive manner. Because People are wanting to follow you, and if you want to gain customers and gain team members, you want to always be that good example. And that is attractive. That attracts people in itself. Okay? 
So thank you guys so much for your time. I appreciate you.